All right, so let's try one out. We're going to calculate the derivative of the function y equal to x squared plus x minus 2 over x cubed minus 6. And the first thing we need to do is just identify, you know, what's the main operation going on here? And a little bit easier to tell with division, because normally we have these big fractions that we're, we're working with. So we have, a, we have a fraction. There's a top function, x squared plus x minus 2, and it's we're dividing by a bottom function, x cubed minus 6. So there actually is division here. So quotient rule is most likely necessary. All right, so how do we actually implement the quotient rule? We want to calculate y prime. Well, we start by just writing, writing this quotient as a product. So we do two copies of our function here top function times the bottom function that's our first copy and then just do it again top function times the bottom function just do two copies in the first copy apply the derivative to just the first term in the second copy apply the derivative to just the the second term and where this is like product rule feels very similar product rule only difference is now there's a minus in between and then we have a big fraction. And then we take our original denominator, which was x cubed minus 6, and we square it. And we don't normally do anything to that. So we just leave it as x cubed minus 6. All right, so then from here, that's the hard part. That's the quotient rule. From here, we just need to finish differentiating. So we have this term in the brackets here. We have a term in the brackets over here. So we have to finish differentiating those. Um, but those are going to be a bit easier. So what's the derivative of x squared plus x minus 2? Well, derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of x is 1. And then the derivative of that minus 2, it's a constant by itself. So the derivative of that minus 2 is just 0. Then we have an x cubed minus 6 outside of the brackets, so that just stays the same. And we go on, we have a subtraction. This x squared plus x minus 2 is outside the brackets, so that just stays the same. And then we need to differentiate over here, the x cubed minus 6. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And then the derivative of that minus 6, it's a constant by itself, so a derivative of that is just 0. And then we divide by x cubed minus 6 squared. And there we go. We have a nice derivative. And if we wanted to, we could simplify this down by kind of multiplying if we wanted to. But this is fine. We can, we can leave this as our answer. If we wanted to simplify it, how would we do it? We would multiply all this out, and then we'd multiply all this out, and then combine like terms. So we won't go through that. Um, and this is perfectly perfectly good for our derivative. All right, let's try let's try another one, just for the practice here. So we're going to do the derivative of f of x, where f of x is the function secant x divided by one plus tan x. And again, sometimes the hard part is identifying what the main operation is here. And in this case, though, for fractions, it's, it's kind of obvious. It's We have a fraction. It's a function on the top. There's a function on the bottom. So we got to use quotient rule. We have a quotient. We have a fraction here. All right, so let's go through, calculate f prime using this quotient rule. How do we implement the quotient rule? Well, let's write our quotient as a product. So top times bottom. So the top function is secant, secant x times the bottom function 1 plus tan x. And then we're just going to do two copies of this. So let's write our second copy. Secant x times 1 plus tan x. And in the first copy, we apply the derivative to just the first function. In the second copy, we apply the derivative to just the second function. And then because this is quotient rule, 
we put a minus sign in between. Draw our big fraction, and then we just take our original denominator, which was 1 plus tan x, and we square it. All right, so that's the hard part. That's the quotient rule. One thing to point out, though, in both of these, and I guess I shouldn't have said it's so it's obvious with a fraction because we see fractions all the time. Why do we? Why are we using quotient rule here? Well, part of the reason is we do have a fraction. The other part is when we look in the top, there's an x term, and when we look in the bottom here, there's an x term. So we only need to really use quotient rule if we have a fraction and there's x terms on both the top and the bottom. Same thing over here. We have a fraction and there's x terms on both the top and the bottom. So, you know, we're going to see fractions all the time, um, but it, it, only in some cases is it necessary to use quotient rule. It's when we have variable pieces on both the top and the bottom. All right. So we've applied the quotient rule here. Now we just keep going and we differentiate the terms that are inside the brackets. So what's the derivative of secant x? Maybe you have it memorized. In case you don't, it's secant x times tan x. But you will need to have these memorized. All right, so that's the derivative of the first piece here. The 1 plus tan x is outside the brackets, so that just stays the same. Then we have subtraction, and then we have our secant x. That's outside the brackets, so that just stays the same. And then we need to differentiate this 1 plus tangent x. So derivative of 1 is 0. So we really just need, what's the derivative of tan x? So again, in case you don't have it memorized just yet, uh, we can look it up at secant squared. And then this is all over 1 plus tan x squared. And that's perfectly fine. We could simplify this a little bit by you know, multiplying things out. Actually, over here, we have a secant x times secant squared. So that would just become a secant cubed. One thing to, to kind of note here is it's very tempting to say, all right, here I have a 1 plus tan x, down here I have a 1 plus tan x, so th those are just going to cancel. And it doesn't cancel like that. So just a little note. Something I see from time to time. We cannot cancel these. The only way we'd be able to cancel 1 plus tan x from the denominator here is if this first factor had a 1 plus tan x, which it does, but we'd also need a 1 plus tan x over here, which we don't have. So it's tempting. You see a 1 plus tan x and a 1 plus tan x squared. It's You just want to cancel these off, but you can't because we would need to have a 1 plus tan x over here in the second piece, which we don't. All right, so Maybe there's a little work simplifying this. We could multiply the secant and the secant squared to get a secant cubed, um, but this is pretty good. All right, so we'll we'll kind of leave it there with this one. And then in the next video, just a couple more examples here of practicing quotient rule. So it just, it comes with practice. The more you practice these, you'll, you'll get these derivatives memorized. So we'll see you there.